everybody. Welcome back to Good Night Lighthouse. I'm Miss Dorothy, and I'm here to read you another story. And I'm here to read you another Easter story. We've been counting down the days to Easter with some really great books. We've been having so much fun with it and learning so much about what Easter is all about. And tonight, I've got a really interesting book. It looks really old, and it's really interesting, and it's called Benjamin's Box. Benjamin's Box. But wait, up here it says, the story of the resurrection eggs. Haven't we talked about that before? The resurrection eggs? I know we have. I think we did it last year, but we didn't read Benjamin's box. You know what? I have the resurrection eggs. I have them right here. I know we've talked about them before. I've always found them so interesting because these eggs have such neat things inside of them. Like, let's look at a couple before we read the story. Here's an orange egg, and it has, hmm, it has praying hands in it. Now, what does praying hands have to do with the resurrection story? I wonder if our new book's going to help us figure that out. Let's see what else we have in our eggs. I know we have a lot of really neat things. Here's a pink egg, and this pink, this pink has, egg has coins in it, like money, like coins. One, two, three, coins. Do coins have something to do with the resurrection story? Wow, so neat. Hmm, let's see. What color should we pick now? Ah, uh, let's look at this green egg. This green, this green egg has a donkey in it. A donkey? Wait, I remember the donkey has something to do with Jesus and the resurrection story. Wow, these eggs are so neat. I'm really, really excited. Let's see. Um, this egg has a rock. Wow, that's a dark pink egg with a rock in it. And this yellow egg. This yellow egg has a rooster. Huh. A rooster, a donkey, a rock. These resurrection eggs are really exciting. But we need to find out what they're all about. And I bet we can find out when we read Benjamin's box. Are you ready to get into this story and these eggs with Miss Dorothy? Good. I need you to sit up and listen up. Because here we go. The Story of the Resurrection Eggs. Benjamin's Box. Written by Melody Carlson, illustrated by Jack Stockman. Benjamin. Long ago in the faraway land of Palestine, there lived a boy named Benjamin. His small, humble home was nestled into a wall of other houses, almost hidden on a narrow back street in the bustling city of Jerusalem. Benjamin loved Jerusalem because God's temple was there. More than that, Benjamin loved God. His grandfather had taught him many things about God when he was just a tiny boy. Benjamin talked to God a lot. He whispered prayers each night at sunset, and in the morning he always gave thanks for the new day. Benjamin's parents worked hard weaving and selling cloth, but their family was still quite poor. So Benjamin helped out by taking odd jobs around the city. Everyone in Jerusalem seemed to know Benjamin. They could always count on him to be an honest and hard worker. Oh look, that's Benjamin back there with the broom. He sounds like he's a really good boy. The box. One bright spring morning, Benjamin sat outside in the sunshine. In his hands was a wooden box. Hi, Benjamin, called his friend Eli. What's that you've got? It's my treasure box, said Benjamin. My grandfather gave it to me before he died last year. He said it was very, very special. Eli opened it and looked in. Ah, there's nothing in it except for some old straw. How can this be a treasure box? Benjamin shrugged. I don't have any real treasures yet, but my grandfather said this straw came from the bed of a baby who was born in a stable. My grandfather was a shepherd then, and he said the baby would grow up to be a king. Ah, why would a king be born in a stable with cows and donkeys? Eli laughed and closed the box. I heard some sort of king is coming today. His name is Jesus. Want to come to the city gate and watch for him? Sure. My grandfather took me 
to hear a man call Jesus once. I listened to him. I liked it. Benjamin and Eli are excited. Jesus is coming today. The donkey. Crowds were already lining the street. Some people cut palm branches from the trees and handed them around. Others laid garments on the street like a carpet. Wow, said Benjamin. He must be a king. The two boys squeezed through the throng just as the donkey entered the gate. That's him, Benjamin pointed to the man on the donkey. That's Jesus. Hosanna, Hosanna, cheered the crowd as they waved their palm branches in the air. Hail to our new king, yelled an old man beside Benjamin. Why does a king ride an ordinary donkey, asked Benjamin. The old man turned. It means he's come in peace. Jesus had come to set us free. Hail King Jesus, said the old man. Benjamin looked into Jesus' face as he drew near. Jesus smiled back as if they were friends. The donkey plodded and Benjamin followed, pushing through the crowd to keep up. At last he drew close enough to pet the donkey. A small tuft of hair came off in his hand. That night, Benjamin placed the bit of donkey fur in his treasure box. Just like there was a donkey in one of my resurrection eggs. That must be why. The coin. In the next days, Benjamin and Eli went to hear Jesus whenever they could. One day as they waited, Eli whispered, The priests have offered money for someone to betray Jesus. Why? asked Benjamin. What has he done? He only speaks the truth. They should listen to him. The priests are jealous of him. They want Jesus to stop teaching, said Eli. Someone should warn Jesus, declared Benjamin. I'm not afraid. I'll go. He pushed through the crowd until he reached one of Jesus' friends. He tucked on the man's sleeve. Um, excuse me, sir. Are you with Jesus? Yes, I am, the man answered. Please, I need to warn Jesus he's in danger. The priests are offering to bribe a bribe to betray him. You must tell... Shh, said the man. Do not repeat this. I'll take care of it. And he slipped a coin into Benjamin's hand. Thank you, sir. Kind sir. What is your name? Judas Iscariot, said the man as he turned away. That night, Benjamin tucked the shiny Daenerys into his treasure box. And that's why I have a coin in my resurrection egg. But that's not good because that man that gave Benjamin the coin, he's the one that's going to betray Jesus. The cup. The next day, Benjamin was asked to help his aunt get ready for unexpected guests. They would be coming for Passover dinner. He went right to work carrying water jugs. Did you hear the guest of honor is Jesus? Said a servant girl. Benjamin's eyes opened wide. Imagine to serve such an important man. He must work hard and do his very best. Two of Jesus' friends came to help and Benjamin listened as they talked of Jesus. They loved him so much. Soon Jesus arrived and the supper began. If Benjamin listened carefully, he could hear some of their words. But what did Jesus mean when he said the wine was like his blood and would be spilled and the bread was to be broken like his body? It made no sense. Then Jesus said to someone would betray him. Benjamin smiled. He wasn't worried. He knew that Judas would prevent this. After supper, Benjamin found a broken cup. He saved it to remember the night when he served Jesus. Praying hands. One of my eggs had praying hands in it. I wonder what that's about. Later, Jesus and his friends left to pray. Benjamin wanted to pray too. He followed at a distance, watching as they finally stopped in a garden. Benjamin sat beneath an olive tree and broke off a twig. He couldn't hear Jesus, but he knew he was praying. Benjamin prayed too. And as he prayed, he rubbed the twig between his hands. Before long, his eyelids grew heavy, and he soon fell asleep. Loud yelling startled Benjamin. He leaped up in time to see soldiers taking Jesus away. Stop, he cried. You can't take him. He hasn't done anything. Shh, boy, said one of Jesus' friends, holding Benjamin back. What's wrong, demanded Benjamin. Why are they taking him? They want to question him. Benjamin pulled away. Why didn't you stop them? But the man just shook his head and walked away. All of Jesus' friends were gone now. 
Benjamin saw the smooth twig in his hand. Dear God, please take care of my friend Jesus, he prayed as he walked. At home, he placed the broken cup and the twig in his box. The Leather Strip Benjamin, did you hear the news? asked Eli the next morning. They've locked Jesus up. Everyone said that Judas Iscariot got a bunch of money to betray him. <gasps> Benjamin gasped. He told Judas about the bribe. Maybe this was his fault. He said goodbye to Eli and wandered through the city. What could he do? Was there any way to help? Sounds of shouting made him stop and he turned to see an angry crowd. Jesus deserved that beating, snarled an old man. That heretic claims to be God's son. He should be stoned, yelled another, shaking a fist. What's going on, asked Benjamin. Did they hurt Jesus? What do you know about Jesus, demanded the old man. They all turned at Stan and Benjamin's with angry eyes. No, no, nothing, he stammered. His gaze dropped to the ground where he noticed a straw strip of le small strip of leather. He picked it up. It was from the whips used by the soldier. It was wet with blood. He tucked it into his tunic and slipped away. Why would anyone beat Jesus? The Thorn Benjamin continued to walk. If only he could make them release Jesus. But what could a small boy do? He heard the loud cries as another crowd gathered at the end of the street. Hail, King of the Jews! yelled a soldier as Benjamin pushed his way past the men and women. And there stood Jesus. Benjamin looked into his eyes as a Roman soldier threw a shabby robe over his beaten back. He expected to see hatred, but instead saw only love. Just then, a soldier shoved a crown of thorns on Jesus' head, and another struck him with a stick. Benjamin's eyes filled with tears. Why were they doing this? A few days ago, everyone had called Jesus a king when he entered Jerusalem. Now, it seemed they all hated him. Benjamin squatted down and buried his head in his hands. Please, God, he prayed over and over. Please make them stop. When he finally opened his eyes, the crowd had moved along. Jesus was gone. He walked over to where they had scorned his friends and picked up a sharp thorn broken from the awful crown. He ran home. His parents paused to hear his story, then sadly shook their heads and returned to their work. Benjamin placed the thorn and the leather strip in his box and cried. That must be why I have a crown of thorns in my resurrection egg. That's really sad. The nail. I have a nail in one of my eggs. Benjamin, called Eli. Have you heard? Jesus is going to be crucified. No, cried Benjamin. He has done nothing to deserve that. <clears throat> Eli frowned. My father says that only the worst criminals are put to death on the cross. Benjamin went inside and sat in a dark corner of his house. He did not want to talk or even think about this sad news. But in his mind, he could still see the evil men hurting Jesus. I must go, he finally said aloud. If this is partly my fault, I can at least be there. I can pray for him. Where are you going? asked his mother as she opened the door. To help a friend, he said. She nodded and touched his cheek. As Benjamin climbed the hill, he found a large spike. It was like those used by the Romans to nail criminals to cross. He tucked it into his tunic and continued on. Three crosses stood at the top, but he could not force his eyes to look upon his friend. He noticed a small group of people apart from the larger crowd. He knew they were Jesus' dearest friends. He sat near them and bowed to pray. But the only words that came were, I'm sorry, God. I'm so sorry. Benjamin feels so bad. And he blames himself, but it isn't his fault. The die and the spear. Benjamin watched as the soldiers gambled for Jesus' clothes. He tried to shut his eyes, ears to hear their cruel remarks. Finally, he forced himself to look up. Benjamin looked into Jesus' eyes and saw such sorrow and pain that it cut to his heart. But he also saw love. And like before, Jesus looked right at Benjamin. Surely, this was his way of saying all would be well. Perhaps he would even do a miracle. But instead, the sky turned dark and Jesus cried out, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. 
The ground shook and Jesus breathed his last breath. Benjamin was stunned. Jesus was dead. As if in a dream, Benjamin heard the people move about. He saw a soldier pierce his friend's side with a spear. People hurried to take down crosses and bodies before the Sabbath began. Soon they were gone and he was alone. He picked up a stone the soldiers had gambled with and looked up at the dark sky. Why had God allowed it? Later that night he opened his treasure box and placed the nail and the gambling stone inside. He looked at his collection. It had seemed so valuable when he believed Jesus was king, but now the strange items only filled him with unbearable sadness, just like the sad items in my eggs. The cloth. Benj Benjamin, called Eli the next morning. Come here the news. Benjamin stuck his head out of the window and rubbed his sleepy eyes. They posted guards at Jesus' tomb, exclaimed Eli. Some say that Jesus will return to life. Benjamin perked up. My grandfather told me that Jesus brought some people back from the dead. Maybe it will happen again, said Eli. But the soldiers say they're making sure people don't steal the body. Quickly, Benjamin dressed and raced to the tomb. Could it be? Could Jesus have returned to life? Oh, how he hoped so. But the huge stone remained in place and the guards blocked the tomb. With dark, scowling faces, they told him to leave at once. As Benjamin walked slowly down the hill, he noticed a bit of white cloth hanging from a small branch. He plucked it off and rubbed it between his fingers. His parents wove cloth like this for burials. Jesus is dead, he told himself as he continued to our home. That night, he sadly placed the cloth in his box. This should surely be the last thing to remember his friend by. He tried to pray, but no words came. He wondered if God even listened. Poor Benjamin. He's so discouraged. The stone. Early the next morning, Benjamin went to the market for his mother. He used to enjoy the crowds in the city, but now they only reminded him of how everyone had turned against Jesus. He shuffled along without looking up. It's a miracle, shrieked a girl. Benjamin stopped in his tracks and listened. Jesus has risen from the dead. The stone's been moved. Benjamin turned and ran from the market and up towards the tomb. Could it possibly be true? Could Jesus have risen from the grave? In his heart, he believed it could be. It must be. He ran faster and even faster. Sure enough, the stone was rolled away. He fell to his knees and thanked God. When he stood, he picked up a sharp piece of broken rock. It must have crumbled from the huge stone. With a joyful heart, he marched back down to the town. Jesus was alive. In the market, he met a woman who was friends with Jesus. I know the good news, he said. Jesus is alive. Yes, she smiled. It's as the prophet said. On the third day, he'll rise. Some of us have seen him. Benjamin ran home and told his parents. He placed the stone in his box. What a treasure he had now. He is risen. During the next few days, Benjamin and Eli listened as the disciples shared about how Jesus had appeared to them in various places. Jesus said that all this came to pass just so forgiveness could be preached to all nations, beginning right here in Jerusalem, explained a disciple. He said that since we saw all these things, now we can go out to tell others the good news of his forgiveness. Benjamin smiled. Now he understood that Jesus had forgiven him too and he wanted to share the good news. He ran home and got his treasure box and went out in the street and gathered all his friends. Inside this box, he explained, is a great treasure. The children drew closer and listened with excitement. One by one, Benjamin took out each item. He explained how he got it and what it all meant. And so you see, he said as he closed the box and looked in their faces, the treasure is really Jesus. Because of what Jesus did on the cross, we can all be forgiven by God the Father. They all cheered and begged him to tell the story again. Thank you. That night, Benjamin opened his box one more time before he went to bed. He examined each item, handling them with love and care. Finally, he placed the last one back in the box. Then he knelt and prayed, Dear God, Thank you for letting me find all these special treasures. But most of all, 
And thank you for sending me the greatest treasure of all. Thank you for sending Jesus. And help me to be a good servant for Jesus. Help me to tell everyone I know the good news of Jesus. Amen. Wow. Wow, what a great story. Benjamin was there and he saw Jesus and he learned all about Jesus. He thought that he was the reason Jesus died, but it wasn't his fault. Jesus died for all of us. He died because he chose to die for all of us. But you know what's so exciting? Just like the tomb was empty, I got this white egg. It's the last one in the resurrection eggs and it's empty. Just like the tomb. We don't need anything in this egg because Jesus is not in the tomb. Jesus is alive. Wow, what a great book. What a great story. And what a great way to explain the resurrection using these eggs at Easter all filled with exciting things. This was so much fun. I loved learning all about Jesus and what happened at Easter. And it made me so excited that the tomb was empty and the white egg was empty because Jesus is not in the tomb. Jesus is alive. He rose from the dead for you and me so that we could live with God one day. How exciting is that? Wow, I'm loving all this talk about Easter and I love how close Easter is. And I sure hope that when you get up on Easter day, you'll think about the resurrection and you can do it every time you look at your Easter eggs. It can remind you of my resurrection eggs. This has been a lot of fun. We have a lot to think about, but we're going to have to think about that on our way to sleep because tonight it's time for you and me to get into bed. I need you to get under your covers, get cuddled up, curled up, ready for a really good night's sleep. And tomorrow, keep thinking about Easter. Keep getting ready with coloring your eggs and having fun. But every time you look at an egg, remember, it's all about Jesus. And whatever you do on Easter Day and every day, when mom and dad talk to you, obey and obey right away. And then come back and see Miss Dorothy because I'm going to be sitting right here ready to read another book to you. Bye. Thanks for reading with Miss Dorothy. I hope you enjoyed this book. And I hope you'll come back soon to read another. What's your favorite book? Drop Miss Dorothy a note and let me know. I'll go find it and I'll read it to you. Be sure to subscribe, like, and share. I'll see you soon.